Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I airbrushed the Oren symbol on the top of a chopper, so custom motorcycle frame. So in order to get the uh, symbol drawn out onto the vinyl, what I did was I printed my reference to scale just on uh, regular computer paper, held it up to the light box uh, with the vinyl obviously on top of that so I could see through it, and then I just drew straight onto the vinyl um, from there. The vinyl that I'm using here is a Metamark vinyl. It's a transparent blue. Um, it's it's okay to use. I still prefer the Hexus uh, grey spray mask, but I had a whole heap of this stuff left over, so I am using it up. Uh, the reason I don't like it as much as the Hexus is because if you leave this on overnight, it will leave glue. So for this particular um, project and any of the other ones that I've used this particular vinyl for, I make sure that um, I just get the job done uh, and remove that vinyl. Do not leave it on overnight. So that's just a little tip. Sometimes it um, might not leave glue, but like I've seen it happen, so I'd hate for you to ruin a piece of your artwork because of it. So what I was doing with the X-Acto blade there was I was um, going over all of the lines just so that we've got everything cut so that I can remove what I need to right now to spray the first part of the double-headed snake symbol. Okay, you'll notice now that all the parts have been removed. I have saved those bits, so don't throw them out if you're following this step by step. I just put it on another backing sheet of vinyl. Now I'm using the same vinyl as my application tape so that I can see through it. And just with the squeegee, I've just applied that over the top of our um, template that we've got there. You'll also notice I've marked a T on the top just so that I know which way is up. Okay, so now that I have my template ready to go, I want to prep up the area where I'm going to lay the template on, which is the top of this uh, particular chopper frame. So I have already pre-cleaned the surface. This frame was pre-painted, so um, it was uh, painted in a specific color, then two-pack cleared, and then wet sanded, um, and then uh, cleaned, obviously, with uh, water-based degreaser as well as... Uh, automotive degreaser like a prep sole so usually I start with the automotive one first and then I finish off with the water base just as a, a um, extra precautionary thing that I like to do um, what I'm doing now is I've put some fine line tape down the center or by eye on the center and you can see I'm using just some measuring tape there to make sure that it's um, fairly close and now I can begin to lay my template on there So what I'm doing here is um, just marking the approximate size, so just a little bit bigger than the symbol, but making sure that it is um, within that masking area still, so that what I want to do is cut that middle section of the pinstripe tape out, so that that way we can lay the template down and we don't have that horrible pinstripe tape in the middle of our stencil.
Okay, so now I'm happy with the positioning. I am using a squeegee and I'm just uh, making sure that that template sits nice and flat. If you are working on a really, really curved surface, you can use the aid of a hairdryer or heat gun. Uh, be very careful with the heat guns. Make sure you turn the temperature down a little bit. A lot of these spray mask vinyls are very thin and they could start to shrink on you if you apply too much heat. So just be wary of that. But no need for a heat gun or a hairdryer at this stage. Um, I've just squeegeed that on and now pulling back on a 180 degree angle. This is helpful when you're removing any type of masking as it just makes sure that it doesn't lift up any other areas that you want to remain on that uh, surface. Okay, so just using some 2 inch uh, automotive masking tape. I'm just taping up around the template to prevent any overspray. So take your time um, and do this as neatly as possible just so that you don't have any gaps. Um, obviously if I was to get any overspray I could get it off but I'm trying to eliminate that. Uh, the less work you have to do later the better. Okay so now we are ready to get into the airbrushing. The first colour that I'm going to use is Payne's Grey by Trident. I've got that in my Iwata HPCS Eclipse which runs a 0.35mm needle. And what I want to do is just get basic coverage over that particular part of the, uh, uh, the template. So the exposed snake that we're working on. And I'm just building up my coats, so giving it a couple of light coats uh, to build up a nice flat tone of that Payne's Grey. Now I've switched to my Iwata CMSB Micron with a 0.18mm needle and I've got Trident White. So all these colours that I'm uh, discussing with you right now, um, these have all been pre-mixed to my liking. So, you know, you make it up the way you want to do it, um, whatever suits you and adjust your air pressure accordingly. Same goes if you're not using Trident, if you want to um, follow this particular tutorial but using the paints that you're familiar with, there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously just switch out the colours as close as possible. Um, but again, you know, I get asked so many times about reducer. There is no sort of perfect mix for everyone. It really depends on your airbrush ability and also the way you like to paint. So just keep that in mind and um, mix up your paint to your liking. So you'll notice what I'm doing here is I've just picked out the eyes and I'm using the white to create my scales. I'm just mapping that in just so that I uh, start to pull out some of the detail within this piece. So in order to render the scales of these snakes and I knew it was going to be repetitive instead of trying to do all that freehand I thought I would make up a uh, little paper template which you can see here. So what I've done is I've just cut the end um, so it's a bit the actual template section is a bit closer to the edge just so that I can see where I'm going with that particular template. Um, it's not 100% crucial um, to try and line it up perfectly. It's going to be very, very difficult. But um, what I want to do is just use this to add the texture on this particular piece. So you can see here I'm just using that template to create my scaly texture. So just following the shape of the snake and making sure that the scales all run in the correct direction. So you'll notice some of the bits have spidered out a little bit. Um, I'm not too worried about that. I can clean that up later on.
So now I want to add a highlight on the top of the snake's body just to give it more of a 3D appearance. So later on I'm going to add some shading as well. But I'm just going to do this freehand straight over the top of all my texturing and you can start to see already how much more of a 3D effect that gives it. Okay, so I'm now switching back to my Eclipse with my Payne's Grey and I'm just going to re-detail some of that head. I'm also using the grey just to shade in the lower sections of the snake's body. I'm also using it to soften some of the scales as well. So I'm now switching to Trident Black and um, again reduce this or even you can mix up with Transparent Base to make it not as uh, strong but um, I'm using this colour to really pull out my detail. Uh, the airbrush that I'm using now is the Iwata CMC Plus Micron with a 0.23mm needle. So you'll really uh, notice how close I am, I'm virtually resting on the surface, hence uh, my glove, even though most of it's protected by the uh, vinyl template, but um, I want to be up nice and close. I've adjusted the air pressure on the front of the airbrush, I've turned that right down as well, um, and over thinned my paint, so that allows me to get um, a little bit more detail and finer control. So I'm only pulling back on that trigger ever so slightly and just being very, very cautious of um, every stroke that I make. If you're interested to check out any of the airbrushes or paints or any other of the products shown within this video, I will have some affiliate links in the description below, so you can definitely have a look at those for more info or if you wish to purchase.
So you'll notice that in the previous clip I was using my airbrush a bit further away just to create that shading on the body of the snake. What I'm doing now is I've switched to my um, freehand templates. These are the uh, Mike Lavalle second degree burn um, art tool templates. Uh, these are predominantly used for true fire um, but they work really well for lots of different applications um, and in particular what I need it for at the moment is just to make uh, the sections of the snake lift above the ones that are intertwined underneath. So I'm using my reference and just carefully uh, using the curves of the template to create those lift points. So wherever um, I've got a lower part of the snake with the other section on top, I'm obviously um, shading that to uh, pop that up. So you can see I've just completed those areas and I'm still moving on to further render the snake's body. Okay, so now that I've completed the shading on that snake, I want to come back in now with my highlights. So I've switched back to my white and I've grabbed my template again and I'm just going to go back over that um, the snake's body. Now the reason for that is because I did kill off a little bit of the detail. Uh, there is still some showing, but hard to see off the video, but I'm just going to come back in using that white and carefully add my texturing back over the top of that so that we get our scales back again. So just continuing with my scales using my white and gone a little bit too heavy on one of those but never fear we get the black and we can eliminate that and then work back over the top of it.
So keep that in mind when you are working on this that um, obviously you, you virtually have an eraser color. Yes, you'll have to go back over and work it um, again, but it's a lot easier doing it that way than starting from scratch. So you can kind of just build your texture. If things are too bright, knock them back. Vice versa, if they're um, not bright enough, just go back over the top of it. Okay, so I've grabbed my white again and I am now going to complete all of my highlights on the snake. So working up extremely close now, I'm using my 0.18 CMSB Micron for this particular step. Uh, making sure that my needle is nice and clean and uh, really keeping it clean throughout just to make sure that I don't get any sort of spitting because of tip drying and um, no obstructions and uh, just being able to keep that control really, really precise. So it's imperative to keep that um, airbrush super clean throughout so that you have less chance of anything going wrong. So if this is the first time watching one of my videos, then welcome. Welcome to all of our other subscribers. But if you haven't already, then feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, and that will notify you every time I put out new content. Okay, so now that I've finished the first snake, what I want to do now is unmask the next one, and we're going to begin working on that. But before I do, 
um, I need to mask off what I've just done so that I don't ruin my artwork that's complete. So I'm going back to the original pieces that I've kept uh, from the template when I cut them out. So I'm repositioning them over the top of what I've just completed and taking my time to make sure that everything is masked up correctly. So just a few uh, last pieces to remove and then we'll be ready to get cracking on the final snake. So you can see here that some of that wasn't cut well enough. So I've just used my blade very, very carefully, obviously, because now we're cutting on to paint. So we do not want to score the surface. Then you could have lift off problems. I have seen it happen before where people cut so deep that they've cut the clear. So you definitely don't want to do that. So just make sure your blade's nice and sharp and just a little bit of pressure, not a lot. you just got to practice. It just takes time to get the feel for it. Okay, so back into the airbrushing and I have white in my airbrush and I'm just giving this a nice even base coat. Uh, the reason being is I want uh, this snake to be brighter than the previous one, so I'm starting off with the white just to brighten it up from the get-go, and then I'll apply my colours on top of that. So that'll give us a bit of a contrast uh, from the previous snake. Okay, so now I'm going to spray a bit of transparent black over those white areas. I've mixed up the transparent black by using transparent base and adding black until I was happy with the strength of the mix. You'll notice I'm only going very light with this. I'm really controlling it because, like I said earlier, I want this snake to be a bit brighter. I'm just toning it down a fraction. Okay, so I'm, I don't want it to be obviously stark white. Hence why I've put that transparent black over the top. So now I'm coming in with black and I'm just going to add some uh, drop shadows of where the previous snake that we've completed uh, sits over the top of this one. Remember these are intertwined so we need to keep that in mind when uh, rendering this particular artwork.
So using my black, I'm going to start detailing the snake. So same as before, we're obviously going to start with the head, and then I'm going to continue to render from there. So up nice and close with this step, and just control all of your detail. If you're not confident using straight black, because uh, it isn't very forgiving at all, then mix up again with your transparent base and make a weaker tone to start with and then you can always go darker as you need to. Okay, so I'll switch back to white and I'm going to start to add some of the highlights and real final detailing on this snake's head. So you can really see here how much that white is bringing that snake to life. So the actual um, first couple of tones that we did, the white with that transparent black over the top has created that gray kind of mid-tone. So it looks like a graduated tone on the scales by just adding the highlights after doing the black. So kind of a bit of a cheat way of doing things, but it definitely saves time and looks just as effective as if you were to render it all with the grey, uh, then a black and then a highlight. So using that paper template again for the scales, just uh, going over with uh, the white, I'm creating my scales on top of that first greyish tone that we created earlier.
So almost done with all those highlights on the top of the snake's body. The next step will be adding some shading as well to make the snake appear more three-dimensional. Okay, so I've got an airbrush with some black in it and I'm going to shade the body of the snake and some sections of the head as well. So just take your time with this step. You don't want to ruin all of the hard work that you've done. So um, I'm just careful with my shading, going back to my reference and also keeping in mind of how that snake intertwines with the other as well. Okay, so now that I've completed all the shading and highlighting on that snake, I am now going to tint the snake with cerulean blue to change its color. The paint that I'm using now is by Createx Illustration Colors. So this is very transparent paint. So this one is just uh, mixed with some reducer. I didn't add any transparent base to this. So just reducer, cerulean blue and just a few light coats to switch this snake from black and grey into a bluey snake. So now that we've tinted the snake, I want to come back in with my white and just do some final highlights. I'm going to pull out some of the scales using my paper template again, but I'm basically just going to check over everything and just uh, use that white to brighten up certain areas and add a few extra highlights here and there.
Okay, so now that my uh, highlights are all complete, I've switched back to black and I'm just going to deepen some of my shadows. Okay, so our snakes are now complete and I can remove the template. So just carefully picking out all the bits of vinyl, um, being careful not to scratch the completed art and also uh, not to scratch the paintwork on the chopper. So just uh, take your time in this step. Okay, so I'm going to add some uh, real fire coming off the symbol, and I'm going to start with blue Trident airbrush paint, and I've just mixed this again to my liking, and I'm using my uh, freehand true fire templates just to create my licks of flame, as well as using freehand techniques. So I kind of try and imagine how the fire would flow from the symbol down the and trickle down the flame. Uh, this isn't meant to be photorealistic flame, so I just want to make that clear. You would do that in a completely different method. These are more sort of uh, custom paint, automotive stylized flames. So um, I just call them real fire. They're not meant to look photorealistic, so I just want to make that clear. Okay, so I'm using a blue tack rag just to take off any of my dry spray 
and to clean the surface and the next step is using light blue I mixed white with cerulean blue for this uh, using Createx illustration colors and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to not necessarily follow the previous flame exactly I'm just going to follow uh, the flow of it in a certain manner but I'm creating a new layer so you kind of need to ignore what you've previously done that's meant to show up underneath uh, and then this one sort of hovers above so that way you're creating those layers to give it that three-dimensional appearance so you'll notice I'm using different edges of the template uh, to create a harsh edge and then I freehand off that. So it's a combination of using both the template and freehand. You don't want to rely on one or the other too much. Um, so if you use the template too much, then it looks very sort of seaweedish. Uh, if you use freehand too much, then it doesn't have those harsh edges that you need to give it more of that uh, flamey appearance. So it's just a happy medium. Uh, have a practice and um, it, it just takes time to master this technique. Okay, so now that I've completed that layer, I've just uh, tack ragged over the top of that um, and now I've got cerulean blue in the airbrush and I'm spraying over the layer that we've just completed with that uh, white cerulean blue mix. So I'm effectively just coating over this nice and even just to give it a bluish tone and to start that layering process. Okay, so you'll notice that using that cerulean blue, I'm being very accurate with where I'm spraying. I'm getting it only over those uh, flame licks that we've created in our previous layer. I am not contaminating our first uh, tone, the uh, original Trident blue layer, and I'm also controlling my overspray so that it doesn't affect the uh, chopper's base colour. So just coming back in and recoding certain areas uh, just to uh, give them a bit more color intensity. So just uh, go over it and check it and um, adjust as needed. And again, extremely careful as to where I'm spraying it. Um, obviously, if this was on a black background, it would be a lot easier to control. You wouldn't have to worry so much about the overspray. But um, I'm very careful due to the fact that we are working on a custom colour. Okay, so back to our light blue mix. And this is the final layer of uh, flame. So effectively these are going to be our highlight uh, licks. So this time I am focusing on top of that previous layer that I just completed. So I don't want to just recreate a whole new layer. This is just really to pull out some of the highlights and make it appear a bit more three-dimensional.
So here we have the completed orange symbol. You can see the base there clear coated. So that's uh, what the color is going to look like once it's obviously cleared and flow coated. So here are a few shots of the completed art. Obviously everything's shown prior to clear. I do hope that you enjoyed watching this tutorial video and I look forward to seeing you again very very soon. Until next time go grab that airbrush and do some amazing artwork yourself and we will catch up with you in the next video. Bye for now.